Hello and welcome back to Free Your Compass. I'm doing a nice year in review uh, as 2020 comes to a close and hopefully welcoming a better 2021 uh, as I'm sure most of us are actually hoping for. I thought it was appropriate to reflect back on the year that has been. Uh, for many of us it has been quite the horror year but there have been good points. We've had a whole lot of wonderful and horrible things happen to us. So basically my the end of my 2019 uh, was not exactly the greatest. Had several uh, issues, family problems and so forth. And was looking forward to a fantastic 2020 coming in. So I had a lot of high hopes for uh, the beginning of this year. Um had some great things to look forward to that I've come to, but in essence, uh, as we know that, you know, this uh, bug that started to hit the world, uh, started to rear its head, and most of us at the early stages of the year really weren't paying much attention to it. It was just yet another thing to cause panic, and I know I was thinking of it as nothing significant at that point in time. Uh, throughout Australia, where I'm from, bushfires were raging through. Our entire country was in absolute chaos and devastation. Massive swathes of New South Wales and Victoria were destroyed. Large amounts of wildlife. It was quite horrible. Uh, have quite the extent that it became worldwide news. Um... So on to more happy things. Uh, we came into what uh, my wife and I have been hoping for for quite some time. We've been planning on going to uh, Queen and Adam Lambert were coming. Uh, looking forward to that. It was fantastic. My son was coming back down to watch the concert with us. And then there was uh, talk of uh, the weather going bad in Brisbane and there have been horrible rains and all the rest of it. And we were thinking, oh, no, this is going to ruin the concert and all the rest of it. And as it turns out, uh, we went and, you know, it looked like the rain wasn't going to happen. And then it was very clear that it was. Uh, it was probably the wettest concert that they had ever played. And I can tell you right now, it's probably one of the greatest concerts I've ever been to in my entire life. And I have a suspicion that uh, Queen and Adam Lambert themselves actually had an absolute ball of a time and probably rate that as one of the their all-time highs as well. Uh, just, it will be burned in my memory for all time, some of the, the scenes and right up to the very end where Roger Taylor comes out with a scuba mask on, which is absolutely classic. The guy's a legend. Um, son goes back up north again, and, uh, well, uh, leading into late February, we end up getting a, uh, a message. We find out that he actually almost drowned in a flooded uh, creek slash river. Um, fortunately, was okay. Uh, that put a, uh, <laughs> a lot of stress on our lives. And to hear that your um, teenage son is um, narrowly escaped death is quite a scary thought. And probably the only thing worse is if you found out that they didn't. Um, coming in towards the end of... Where were we then? 29th of February. Uh, went to the Gold Coast concert. That was the meet and greet. This was the big one that we were waiting for. Once again, Queen and Adam Lambert. Yes, went twice. And that was worth it. Um, did the meet and greet VIP. It was absolutely amazing. I got to meet them. Uh, I went in. I had this whole idea in my mind of what I was going to say and how cool I was going to be and question I had a question I was going to ask and then I was going to you know make these great comments but quite literally I walked in there Brian May is like this giant of a man compared to me his hand comes out to shake my hand and I just basically just totally starstruck I was like oh, they're, they're, they're totally wonderful wonderful to meet you it was like it's quite embarrassing really um but in the end met them got my photo taken great highlight then the entire concert, the energy of the last concert in Australia, fantastic. It was amazing. Right up the front, 
uh, sits basically standing in right in front of where Brian May spends the majority of his time. And it's like, ah, oh. anyway, that was fantastic. So go home on a high. Um, and then uh, we met up with some um, friends my wife had made uh, from England. Um, met up with them because they also went to the same concert. Uh, that was really very lovely. Um, after that, interestingly enough, um, and what really shows how lucky we were to a large degree, it was basically two weeks later, all the shuts down, shutdowns started. If two weeks later on that concert, we never would have gotten to go to it. Uh, two weeks after that, we'd gone from being, oh, you know, everybody's joking and laughing about it to, oh my God, this is real. The whole world changed. Uh, I work in retail. Uh, in electrical goods so we were deemed a essential service my wife works in the health industry and aged care so she's also an essential service so fortunately we didn't lose our jobs but with the way things were going um, the thing to remember is when you're in that situation you're working with people you wake up in the morning and half of you is thankful you've got a job to go to. The other half of you is terrified that the next person you meet is going to kill you. Um, I went from being utterly terrified to utterly disgusted in humanity. Uh, working in retail, I could see the swarms and masses of people who would basically come in because they had nowhere else to go. And, you know, they'd come in to print photos. They'd come in to have a wander and a look because they couldn't go anywhere else. There's absolutely no concern whatsoever as to the health and well-being of people who needed to shop or the people who were working there. Uh, some of our public holidays, which were very busy, it was shoulder to shoulder, you know. Uh, anybody who worked in retail during this can tell you just how ridiculous the populace was as a whole um, in those situations at the very least. Um, but we survived. Um, got through it. I ended up getting to a point where I was, you know, I was spraying Glen 20 on myself using hand sanitizer constantly. And then I ended up flipping the other way to the point where I ended up deciding, well, if I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it, you know. Um, you sort of almost loss of I was desensitized to the scenario because I was just constantly bombarded with people who refused to social distance anyway moving on from that things started to sort of settle in Australia we see the uh, America goes into a practical civil war which is rather interesting um, on the one hand it's like everybody social distance and stay in your homes and the other uh, other on the other hand they're all rioting the places it's, it's rather crazy only in america um anyway my life i continue working continue doing things i'm obviously uh, i've started my podcast i've um and youtube channel which basically in tandem with each other i've continued to work on that um to varying levels of regularity but i've kept up with it so what does the future bring? Uh, my hope is that I will continue with this. I'll get more listeners. I'll get some more viewers. Um, I'll actually help some people with this and I'll actually help my own headspace as well. Um, in that, I'm going to be more regular. I've pinky promised my wife that I'm actually going to really focus on my health properly. In this coming year it's not just going to be a new year's resolution it's going to be a genuine focus to get my health back on track you know i i want to live a long and happy life with my wife and you know i've been suffering depression for a long time and the fact of the matter is i need to find a way to get out of that and find a way to enjoy my life and heal myself and it's time to push myself past those boundaries and hopefully you can join me on that journey and I can help you as well in that I'm going to start eating better and baby steps work my way through it but I'm really really focused that by mid-year I should be at a relatively 
healthy weight and a relatively healthy fitness level and then continue to push that further. Uh, anyway, stick with me, stay on the journey and well, my year in review, it had its ups and downs. 2020 is not a year that any of us really want to uh, look back on uh, and none of us are going to sadly uh, look back on its passing. We're all going to actually, I believe, be very happy that it's done and dusted. But keep the sobering thought in mind that just because the year changes doesn't mean life does. Um, try and get a fresh start. Have a happy new year. May your 2021 be far, far superior to what your 2020 was. But also remember there were good things this year. There were a lot of good things that did happen this year as well. Thanks very much for listening. I'll catch you in the next one. I'll uh, speak to you early in the new year and give you an update as to where my weight is, where my health is, and that way we're going to track each other. Keep it going and get me healthy. And then, hey, hopefully you follow along. Thanks very much. Catch you next time.